So how is your race going? Still running with perseverance and determination? Are you running stronger now because you recognize the, the discipline that God throws your way and you recognize that as those hardships and those persecutions, those difficulties, those are things that God sends to you to strengthen you in your race. You're running stronger? The last couple of weeks we've talked about that, haven't we? Running our race toward heaven. And we know that that, that, that racetrack is paved with pitfalls and, and hurdles, but we also know that, that Jesus... Jesus ran that race perfectly for us. He's completed that race. And we've also looked at, at uh, the great cloud of witnesses, the people that are standing on the sidewalks and in the stands cheering us on. These are the believers who have run their race. They have died, but now they're in heaven. And now their example, their stories cheer us on. Today we're going to look at that again too. Jesus shares with us this morning how to run our race with just one word. Love. Now, if, if you've watched runners, especially in the Rio Olympics this past summer, you, most runners don't usually run with love for their fellow competitors because they're focused on their race, their time. This is my lane. That's my finish line. That's my gold medal, right? They're focused on on themselves, pretty self-centered. Very, very rarely, very rarely do you see examples of charity in a race. But we saw that this past summer. You have Nikki Hamblin from New Zealand and you have Abby Diagostino from the United States and they're running the 5,000 meter race. That's a long ways to run. And they both get tangled up in each other. They both fall to the ground. They fall on the track. And Diagostino gets up and she helps Hamblin up to her feet. They both start running and then Diagostino falls to the ground. She starts crawling on all fours just to keep going. Hamblin from New Zealand stops her race and goes back to help Diagostino to her feet and stays with her until she knows that she can keep going on her own strength. That's running the race with love, isn't it? Listen to the ways God wants us to run our race with love. In a letter, from, a letter to the Hebrews, he says, Keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as if you yourself were their fellow prisoners and those who are mistreated as if you yourself were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have and remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. All of those imperatives can be summed up with just one word, love. And even though hospitality, southern hospitality is what we are known for, it's not always our strong suit, is it? Sometimes we get tangled up in our race and we trip and fall because we find it difficult to love others. And sometimes we think that it's difficult to love others because the problem lies with the other runners on the track with how they're running their race or maybe how they're not running their race. And what really trips us up is this other type of love. Let's see if you can figure it out as we go through this list of people and things that God wants us to love. First of all, he says, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Why is it so difficult for us to love each other here at Mighty Fortress Lutheran Church? I think that, that what we do at times is that we base our love for each other contingent on how the other person is, is treating us. Maybe it was that, uh, that word of constructive criticism given by someone that, and they meant it in all humility and love, but you didn't take it that way. 
And in your sinful pride, you said, Not, no one's going to tell me what to do. And maybe, maybe we have the desire to serve, but what we do is we turn our service into this selfish competition with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Do you see what kind of love I'm, the writer is getting at here? What trips us up? We go on to the next one, next category. God does not want us to forget the love shown to strangers. He's talking about hospitality, isn't he? And he's not talking about you having to pick up every single hitchhiker that you see on I-20. Or when you go to Midtown and you have to drop a dollar in every single hat that's being held out to you. He's just talking about loving strangers. But we have a difficult time doing that, don't we? We're at Kroger in line and that nice individual says, hey, can I just sneak in? I just have a couple of items. And we fuss at them for that. Or maybe even here at church, uh, we want to be welcoming to guests, but when we see them seated in our seat, we fuss at them. And it's not just the people that we can physically talk to, that we can see, but it's this, the people that we don't have to see. We can be faceless on social media. We can be anonymous online. And we can say the nastiest things to people in our Facebook, Facebook posts and Instagram pictures and whatever else that we post. And we don't have to see them. We don't have to know them. But we can become as nasty to them as we have seen nastiness in the presidential debates. Right? Do you see what kind of love trips us up on our race? We'll keep moving on with this list. Continue to remember the imprisoned. Well, that can be easily forgotten because the state and federal correctional institution is something that we don't want to have anything to do with. We don't want to be associated with those people. Marriage should be honored by all. To love God's will for sexuality in marriage, to love God's will for men and women in marriage is something that we say, no, Lord, I'm going to do what I want. I want to do what my passions and my desires and my lusts drive me to do. God wants us to love contentment and not to love money. But this love affair that we have with our stuff is really hard to divorce, isn't it? He says, love, love your leaders who speak the word of God to you. But we find it difficult to do that when they don't handle every situation exactly the way that we would have handled it. When we don't particularly like the way that they plan worship or preach a sermon or read, lead a Bible study or plan an event or when they forget things or when they stumble and fall, we have a hard time loving our leaders. Do you see why we have such a difficult time loving it's because of this other type of love. It's called self-love. Selfish love. This love affair that we have with ourselves and we become so self-centered that we think that loving others is somehow beneath us. And when we live, we run our race loving ourselves more than we love our God, then we're going to trip and we're going to fall. We're going to stumble. But we're in danger of dropping out of the race altogether. So the bottom line is, are we going to run our race loving ourselves or loving our God? You remember Hamblin and Diagostino they tripped and fell, they helped each other up. And Hamblin finished the race and Diagostino did too. She limped along, she finished her race, came in dead last. And as you listen to the commentators Describe this, they're saying, oh, look at that determination, look at that grit, that, that, that self-confidence, that strength that she pulled up out of herself to finish her race. But my fellow runners, we can't do that. We can't run our race with love on our own strength, on our own determination, on our own grit, because that's the sin, the self-love that just so 
corrupts us. We have to rely on another runner to pick us up and to motivate us to run our race with love. And there's another runner on the race. He, he already ran it. And he ran it with determination and he ran it with perseverance and he ran his race with love, perfect love. And he didn't think that loving other people was somehow beneath him, even though he was the son of God. And the author to the Hebrews calls him Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Yesterday. Jesus' love is the same as it was yesterday. And the author means that from the beginning of time until now, from before eternity until now, his love has been the same. Jesus Christ ran his race with perfect love. He loved his brothers and sisters even though they thought he was crazy for calling himself the Son of God. He loved complete strangers, healing their diseases, casting out their demons, feeding their thousands, raising their dead even when they didn't turn and give thanks to him. He loved the prisoners. He respected God's gift of sex reserved for marriage by remaining a chaste single man. Jesus loved prisoners. Jesus loved his leaders who spoke the word of God to, them, to him even though they were the very ones who had him arrested and tried and sentenced to death. Jesus loved them all the way to the cross. Jesus' love is the same yesterday. Jesus' love meant that loving you and me is, was not beneath him. Even if it meant suffering for, for my self-love, for your selfish attitudes, for your and my failure to love God's word above our own word, that's how much Jesus loved you and me, all the way to the cross. And that love yesterday is the same as it is today. Today, Jesus announced to you through your called servant, your sins are forgiven. And my friends, you are. Today, Jesus gives you comfort by promising you, I have drawn you to myself with loving kindness. You are mine. Today, God's grace extends to you through his word that you are listening to right now. Today, God's love covers over you through his son's body and blood. Today, God gives you forgiveness through water and word. Today, you stand forgiven because of Jesus' love. And that love today points us to the future. Jesus Christ is the same forever. As we look ahead, we know that Jesus' love will never leave us when we run our race with love. He said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And so our comfort and our hope is this, that, that when we stumble and fall because of our selfish love, God is right there to pick us up and say, but I still love you and I forgive you. When we are afraid to love because we've been burned in the past, when we are afraid to love because we say, that's too difficult to do, we have this promise from God, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The answer is nothing. And so today and tomorrow and the next day, I will love you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And you will love each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. And you and I will be energetic about loving people that we don't even know. Yes, that individual at the grocery store. Yes, that individual online that's saying nasty things about your particular political candidate. Because Jesus may be using your love and your kindness to reach out to that individual so that they might know Jesus' love for them. You and I will show love to prisoners by praying for them. And if I can put a quick plug in here, maybe even participating in our church body's prison ministry by writing letters to prisoners, by sending them Christmas cards. 
You and I will show love for marriage and honor God's gift of sexuality both as single people and as married people. You and I will have a love for contentment and get, a, get rid of this love for, for money. And we will pray earnestly every day instead for our daily bread. And we will thank our Father in heaven so graciously for providing for us. And we will graciously and generously give back to him, trusting him when he says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And we will love our leaders, those who speak the word of God to us. And we will love them not because we like their personality, not because we like their preaching style, but because they speak the word of God to us. And instead of finding fault with the things that they do or the things that they fail to do, and I will be the first to admit I have many faults, that we focus on the word of God that they speak to us and to forgive them when they fall. This is running your race with love. And when we run our race with love, are we not directing the attention to where it rightfully belongs, to our God? Giving glory to God as we run our race with love? And when somebody sees that, as they saw Diagostino and, and Hamblin, and they said, there is the true Olympic spirit, they say of you, ah, there is the true spirit of God that we quickly stop and offer a humble prayer to our God and say, not unto us, but to your name be the glory. My fellow runners, as you leave today and run your race, run, run it with love. And, and run it having just come from the, from the foot of the cross, seeing what Jesus has done for you. And you're going to be different in this world as you run your race, as you run with love. But that's who you are. You are loved by Jesus. And so you will go out and run your race with love. May God grant you the strength to do it. To his glory. Amen.